some of you to come in. Let me put this on silent. Because I know I'm going to get a hell of messages whilst I'm live. But hello to everyone coming in. Just taking a little stroll through the park. I'm telling you this. Transit over the last few days has been really healing for me. <laughs> I've been doing nothing but writing, nothing but thinking. <laughs> a lot of it in my head, and realizing most of it I need to get the fuck out of my head. Because <laughs> sometimes the head can lead you astray, the head leads you away from the heart. The head is always in conflict with the heart. The heart is free, the heart is truth. But we want to block the heart. Often in times of... for the intention to protect the heart. But sometimes it just blocks everything else. <laughs> the heart... The heart's quite interesting, actually. Because I, I said this on the Love Alive the other day. Um, about the heart and ancestors. Some of this was triggered off of um, a video I was watching a few days ago with, I think it was Black Magic and um, Blue Pill. And he said that statement, but it made me just go deeper and just unravel it a bit deeper. And what made sense to me. Um, he said something about the heart. And the ancestors, ancestors being basically ent entities that are in our heart. And I was like, shit. That makes sense. And they started talking about blood and DNA and how that's always that's connected and it gets pumped through the heart okay so a lot of the desires they say the desires are linked to the heart right out of the, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth the mouth speaks speaking its desires what it really wants what it truly desires what it truly desires because the heart never lies right The heart is filled with a whole bag of entities that we haven't actually taken time to sit down and really understand where's the source of all of these desires coming from? Is it me that's even in control of them? quite interesting we also have people that live within our hearts and we will we also live within the hearts of other people those are also entities some of our desires if you look at family family lives within our heart right some of our desires are based off our family's desires it's not really our desire some of our desires are filled of society's desires. It's not really our desire. But we've allowed someone else to take reverence and not really claim our sovereignty over reverence of the heart. And um, I just found it really interesting today. I had two really needed conversations. Um, with two of my bros it's interesting I really relate and resonate more with advice from balanced rational males that still are in touch with their feminine nature I feel like I really gravitate to that groundedness and sense of rationality um, but it, it was really important because 
it really just confirms the fact that a lot of the time we think we are the only ones that can look into the mirror and see what, exactly what's being reflected back at us. Not all the time are we the only person that's going to know. We always need a mirror. That mirror may reflect through anyone, right? It's not always going to be harmonious. Um, <laughs> even soulmates, we always have this romanticised perception of soulmates and they're the person that you're supposed to love and be connected with for the rest of your life and that they're supposed to love you and you're supposed to feel this romantic idealistic perception of love soulmate is not necessarily someone that you're meant to be with it's not necessarily a lover it can be it can also be the ex that pissed you off. <laughs> Ooh. It can also be that friend that backstabbed you. It can be that mother that continually said hurtful words to you. It can be so many different things. And really, they're just here to trigger you to remember it's funny I had this um, vision the other day and it, everything clicked in that moment um, and I saw a vision of me and my partner actually speaking to each other in another life um, and I no he said to me um he said to me, if we ever meet again, just scream at me until I wake the fuck up. <laughs> and then I said to him, just remind me to be strong. And that fucking really just clicked for me in that moment. Because... You know, you can feel frustrations and whatever. But at the, end of the at the end of the day, things don't always look the way that you want it to look. Right? Things all don't always go the way that we want it to go. If you look at my post that I put up yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, and I was talking about electional astrology and how there's only like three or four days that is like where things can actually go like smoothly well life ain't always meant to go smooth right there's ebbs and flows there's roller coasters there's all that kind of shit and um why was I even saying this I can't even remember but essentially what I'm trying to say is soulmates can be anyone right and their point is to be a catalyst in your journey. You may, and, and the thing is, that can be a friggin' wake-up call, right? Because you may not like the direction that, that that journey is going. But it's not to say that it's going to be bad. It's just, you just don't, it's not your ideal, right? You wanted it this way, but that way might fit your direction a bit better have you ever considered that you don't like to be able to consider that because it's scary what does that look like what does that feel like <laughs> and me as a Gemini I need to know everything I've got I've got to have some fucking answers okay <laughs> listen you ain't gonna run nothing past me about me getting my answers <laughs> Gemini life forever okay but can't always get answers like and that's one thing I'm learning right now just to just allow things to be man just experience it just experience it don't try to box it don't try to link it to something else just allow it to be in its essence
they try to control it they try to manipulate it into anything else and we sometimes get scared of that word control and manipulation and we only identify it in very extreme um very extreme posit or um, expressions right that often cause like a lot of harm but we don't notice how we can express it very subtly you know can play out in so many different ways like even me wanting to know me wanting to know so that I can be prepared and make sure I'm not caught off guard right so I need to know you ain't gonna catch me I ain't gonna break I need to know what the fuck I'm about to go through. <laughs> you can't always know. Sometimes you just need to flow. And the scariest thing is that you're having to learn that. This is a moment where all of us collectively are having to learn to walk on fucking water. Whatever the fuck that means in your personal life. <sighs> that means having no ground. And, um,. It's funny because um, a couple of days ago, like I kept saying to myself, shit, I feel like I'm at rock bottom. I need some ground, I need some ground, I don't feel stable. And then Spirit was like, so you don't know the rock bottom is ground? What ground are you on? This is a new foundation, it just feels uncomfortable to you. Now you can build, there's nowhere else to go, right? There's no, this is just bringing up every root <laughs> and we only like to go surface we only like to go surface we only like to go so far because it's scary it's scary in the dark <laughs> it's very scary in the dark let me tell you firsthand it is not easy in the dark and this new moon is about to switch off the lights for all of us and that's the word that kept coming through to me. The lights are about to go out. The lights are about to go out. This moon, and I'm gonna come light, I'm gonna come live a bit later um, when I get home. Because I did a reading yesterday for myself that I was um, given the okay to share publicly. And um, reading's intense, but one of the cards that came up in that was a dark moon and even though this is a new moon it is a double new moon um sorry this is yeah it's double new moon in cancer normally the dark moon happens or the black moon happens after um two full moons but we just had two new moons so i'm feeling like this energy is going to have um almost like a dark moon type influence to this energy and there's no light there's no light at all you're gonna have to find light in the darkness Whew, and that's hard because that means letting go of everything you thought you knew about your reality and everything that you have built all of your functioning mechanisms all your defense mechanisms they're not gonna work anymore you're gonna have to feel all of this all of this we are going to have to feel all of this because humanity has to shift humanity has to heal and even right now I'm feeling my heart chakra and my heart chakra is pulsating right now humanity needs to heal the heart the heart is earth earth is hurting earth is hurting mother is hurting mother women there's a serious charge right now and I'm gonna when I go when I share my reading because those emotions are real for a reason because we need to change how we deal with them how we've been dealing with them all along it's not healthy it's not working anymore we're at the dead end where are you gonna go are you gonna keep screaming or are you gonna figure out a way of how to dissolve this fucking wall because I believe in alchemy I don't believe in any boundaries or limitations. 
I believe in learning how to fucking dissolve them. Yeah? That's real magician shit. Yeah, I don't believe in blocks. That's how I get through life. That's how quickly I'm able to get myself up because I don't allow myself to exist in the realm of blocks and limitations. The realm of Saturn. That's, 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 that's this earth. That's a 3D matrix. Limitations or perceptions of limitation. This is the other side. This is what I'm learning in my Saturn return. The flip side of Saturn. Because everyone always gets scared when it comes to Saturn. Oh, something's going to get taken away. Something's going to get limited. Something's going to be restricted. And obviously Saturn's in cold rulership with Aquarius, so a lot of it's going to be connected to an element of your freedom. Or what you identify as freedom. There's two sides. And we have to learn to transcend this 3D perception of limitation. There is no limits. There is no boundaries. Even right now as I'm walking through this park, <laughs> I could choose to accept this is what this looks like as I'm walking through it. You know? Or I could change my perception. Hold on, let me show you this guy because this guy is wild. I don't know if you can see him. This guy rides around here every single blood clot day looking like some lightsaber. I can't, you can't ever see his outfit. This guy looks like Jesus with his hair flowing on his skateboard. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> I love it though. It actually, every time he comes here, it inspires me because it just teaches, it reminds me to just stay different. Stay out the box. <laughs> Fuck what everyone else thinks, man. <laughs> Fuck what everyone else thinks. See, this is the thing. We're scared of difference because everyone else is scared to do that, right? Always want to stay in the, in the social norms of what's acceptable. But then who gets the attention? The one that steps out the box. <laughs> right? The one that steps out the box is the one that gets all the attention, that gets the recognition. Like, shit, that's really cool, but we never want to acknowledge it. We don't want to give them the credit. It's a funny thing, humanity, right? But I'm learning how not to give a shit. <laughs> And how to exist in my own little bubble of reality. What resonates with you? What is your perception? How are you going to choose to perceive this? Like even just right now, I've, I've, I've had a massive loss. Massive loss. One of the biggest losses you could ever think of. But I choose to not see it as a loss. I choose to not see it as a loss. My perception of how I see my situation. If again, even again, how we perceive loss, how we perceive death. This is Scorpio shit, right? Everyone gives Scorpio the death card, right? Like this is the end. The end is the beginning. It's the end of one perception in the beginning of another. The end of one realm, the end of one age, the end of everything. And the beginning of something else, we just don't know what it looks like. And we don't have to know what it looks like. We don't have to know what it looks like. And I think that needs to be a mantra right now. We don't have to fucking know what it looks like. We don't have to know the answers. We just need to take the steps. And if we put one step in front of each other, just one step a day, you know that in a year from now, you'd be, you'd take, you would have taken 365 steps to somewhere, <laughs> right? Either away from where you currently are or towards, and, and towards something else. But you've taken steps. Those steps could have, could have been exploration. What lessons did you learn there? And from who? What did they teach you? Not only what did they do, what did they teach you? What are you learning? And flip the perspective back to self again. 
And this has been, well, I've been very quiet the last few months. I've had to just flip perspective on self and just be quiet, sit in that for a little bit. This is a time where a lot of us just need to be quiet <laughs> and listen to that inner voice. What is that inner voice saying? And be, be really paying attention to that inner voice because you're having to navigate those downward emotional spirals that comes with that inner voice. Voices of criticism. And you know, oh, you failed. But there's wisdom there. Your higher self is your inner voice. The wisdom that you're trying to seek, that you're trying to get, is your inner voice. But we're trying to hear something from outside yeah we can have mirrors yeah you can always have mirrors but don't rely on the mirror only have the mirror as a, as a trigger point oh here he is <laughs> skies are done <laughs> skies are fucking g <laughs> he does not give a shit <laughs> live life be that guy <laughs> I'd love to know his placements. <laughs> See, that's the life of an astrology. You just walk around, you're like, shit, I wonder what their placements are. <laughs> but yeah. Stop giving a shit. In moderation. I'm a Gemini, I always gotta bring that flip side because sometimes the ego can take over. Just have shit and check. Whatever that equilibrium looks like for you. How much battery life I've got left? Whatever that equilibrium looks like for you. Just have shit in check. And it don't mean to say that that check needs to look perfect because it never is going to look perfect. <laughs> it looks like Doc from Back to Be. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. I literally swear. Like, I, I, I feel like he's been placed in my simulation for a reason like because <laughs> he literally just rem he, he's like a trigger for me every time i see it. he's here every single day let me switch hands my hand is hurting oh no but yeah just really flip the perspective on things forget what is being projected in a simulation so i've turned off the tv I don't even really want to hear too many people's opinions right now. That's why I'm not really talking to too much people. Seriously, I'm really just getting irritated with everyone. Everyone has a fucking opinion. And most of these opinions have nothing to do with their fucking life. Like, you, how can you have an opinion on something you've never lived? What the fuck? Everyone's turning into therapists overnight. Wounded healer again, but then can't actually heal your own ailments I just want us all to be honest this is why I speak so candidly about my own flaws like shit and I've struggled throughout my life I've always been placed in this box of higher than I never placed myself there I really hope I don't give off that impression to people because that's not what I think of myself I do not think highly of myself or higher than or higher than anyone. I just I'm learning to love myself and I've never been able to love myself before. So this is new for me. And I'm just expressing as a wounded healer, someone who's had wounds and learning how to heal their wounds and still inspiring other people in that same journey still real the journey doesn't ever stop when people get that impression like the journey doesn't stop the journey doesn't stop because life doesn't stop life is always going and there's always challenges and just like i said like there's only like three golden days three or four golden days in a whole year where everything's gonna go smoothly everything else you have to figure it out <laughs> it is what it is you can choose your perception on it. Is it is it smooth or is it not? What gems can you take out of it? Even with COVID and this whole pandemic, 
What gems can you take out of this? Even in the loss. But you've lost everything and things hasn't gone exactly how you wanted it to go. What is being gained in there? There's always a pendulum. Don't focus on the negative or the, the bottom end of things. There's a whole spectrum of things to be experienced and acknowledged. Life is so much more, like, and I'm just learning how to not see life in limits anymore. Life is not limited. Life isn't even limited by life itself. Life still lives on, E equals MC squared. Energy never dies. You hear that? This shit is forever. <laughs> this shit is ever existing. And so are you. Your soul is. There's so much going on. And I know everyone's hurting about something or remembering some hurt about something or just frustrated about something. It's okay. Just, just, just allow yourself to feel. Because right now we're, pro we're projecting it onto everyone else right now. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Someone else is becoming the punching bag for your deflection of your own wounds. So let's just flip the mirror. And let's understand that you are not the only victim. We're all victims. We're all victims in this situation together. We're all going through a collective shift. There's a collective wound that is being resurrected around us all globally right now that we're being forced to deal with. And it affects us directly and everything connected with us. We're having to learn to step out on no ground at rock bottom. Didn't, that's not easy. All of my Saturn and Capricorns going through their Saturn returns right now. Listen, you know it's not easy. Let's stop fronting. Let's really stop fronting with this shit, man. This shit ain't easy. We're all up on Instagram acting pretty and shit. Like, life goals. Nah, shit, man. We're all going through some loss. We're all going through something. Some at different levels than others, but this has affected us all. So let's just learn to be a bit more compassionate with not only ourselves, but with other people. If someone acts a bit funny right now, just have a bit of compassion. Listen, look, there's a wound, there's a collective wound right now. I don't use it to judge people or to diagnose people, but just to recognize our own humanity. Humanity's hurting right now. Because what they wanted to be is no longer. Or the fixated idea of what they wanted it to be is no longer. They're having to learn to find another way to be. I am not about to risk that with my flip-flops. Let me wait for the green man. <laughs> it's not an easy way to be. So, find yourself someone you can reflect to. Be very careful of the friends that you're allowing yourself to talk to right now because not every friend... Let me tell you something about advice, yeah? I'm very, very careful. Oh, Lord, I'm also. Mm -mm. All these flyers, where you going, man? Um, I'm very careful about where I get advice from, who I get advice from. Because when I say I'm really serious about my journey, I know a lot, it becomes a buzzword for everyone. But I'm really, really serious about my journey. And, um,. Like, I'm learning to live this every day for real. Like, not just for social media, like, for real, for real. Like, those who know me in my personal life, you know, like, this is, this is my life. Like, we have these conversations all the time. Like, I check myself all the time. Like, it's real life. But 
if you don't have a friend that's learning to have a friend that is able to be real this is what I mean everyone's got a wound everyone's got a fucking wound man my heart's hurting right now everyone's got a wound bro oh my god it's crazy when you're an astrologer and you see this shit playing out in real life but back to what i was saying if your friend ain't trying to overcome their own struggles and be real with themselves and be honest with themselves and take those leaps for themselves they can't really be an honest friend for you. They can't be an honest reflection to you. And this is why I'm very careful of who I speak to. I need to know that you're a few steps above me. Even like, you know, not even if you're, a, you don't even have to only be above me. Like understanding like, you're actually doing it. Like actually real life doing it. Like. There's, there's parts that you're learning yourself that you can share with me. But if you're not learning anything, all you can just say is, I was crazy, just be strong. And I'm sick and tired of that shit. That shit don't help no one. I need to know what to do. And I want my friends to be able to progress me further as I help to progress them. This is a two-way journey and, you know, you need to know your tribe right now know your tribe know your soul family know your family know who you resonate with know who's on the same frequency not everyone is supposed to be on the same frequency that's how we have different notes different notes have different frequencies different notes create different chords you can't have every note with every other note and let it have a harmony that's how astrology works as astrology and music is connected Right, there's triangles, there's squares, there's oppositions, there's sextiles, there's quintiles in conjuncts. Same with music. There's certain notes that create dissonance. It's okay, it is what it is. So what works? What can work? And again, that's even another perception thing in itself. Because if you know anything about music, there's also, uh, there's tonal music, which is more melodic music that, you know, suits your ears, more air pleasing. You can understand that music, even if it's a different genre or whatever, it makes sense, right, musically. And then you have a tonal music. A tonal music is usually the type of music that you'll hear with like the haunted house and stuff with notes that are just close together like five or six notes just clustered together that don't make no sense just chaos but did you know that's still art it's just we put the perception of dark onto it it's still art it's still creativity and you look at artists that um like abstract artists like picasso and Van Gogh and all these people. It's art that is outside of the social construct of what people usually create. But again, it's shifting the perspective. Are you just going to go with the norm? Are you just going to create what resonates with you? <laughs> Someone else will resonate with it. It just doesn't have to be this person or maybe someone else can learn how to resonate with it oh that's something new i've never been exposed to that what is that you know let me find some more music like that and learn something that i've never been exposed to before that's what we're going through through as humanity right now 
So just allow that process to take place. This is an exploration phase. We're not meant to know. Thank you, shame. We're not all meant to know the answers. So just flow. So share this video. Um, I'll, put, I'll be going live a bit later. I just need to get back home. And I want to share that reading that I got yesterday because that reading was fire. Um, and it really slapped me upside my head. So <laughs> I hope it does the same for you, but no, it doesn't hurt you in, 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 in the physical sense, but it just helps you to just recognize, yo, there's another side and it starts with us. So, um, yeah, I'll check in with you guys a bit later. And, yeah, see you on the other side.